morning. We are joined today with another podcast with Dr. Paul Burkett, who is the Senior Policy and Practice Advisor in the Standards and Enhancement Office at the University of Bolton. Good morning. How are you today? Morning, morning. I'm fine. It's a little warm. A little warm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we're really warm at the minute. Yeah. I think we've just been talking about how we're just not set up for heat in this country, are we? That's right. Yeah. And uh, I'm feeling relaxed, though. I mean, just uh, just had a few days away so you feel all happy and refreshed yeah i do back to work tomorrow Mm. oh back to the grindstone (laughs) you want to be uh, back on holiday again yes absolutely i'll have to wait a few weeks so i've got some more time booked uh. then it all starts getting a bit exciting approaching september doesn't it that's right yeah i've started to think now what do we need to do before september yeah yeah, list of jobs to complete. Yeah. Oh, bless. All right, so thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me today. Um, as you're aware, I'm doing a series of interviews with different academics at the University of Bolton, just talking about your academic journey. And that's pretty much where we start. So if you don't mind, if you don't mind talking about your academic journey, thinking about high school onwards, how has it been for you? Um, oh, right, starting back at high school. Um, that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> yeah, quite a while ago. Uh, well, I, I I went to a grammar school uh, in uh, in uh, Carlisle uh, when uh, when there were lots of grammar schools in uh, in the country. Um, although I, I mean, I was brought up on a uh, well, I was brought up on a council estate in uh, in Carlisle, a post one of these post war uh, new build council estates. Uh, that my parents had, and um, there was there was no university uh, background in the family at all. Uh, um, my mum did a bit of nursing. My dad, he was a studious guy, you know. He did the Times crossword, and uh, um, uh, he had a go at writing a novel and such. But uh, he uh, he left school at fourteen, so um, uh, he uh, he never got to uh, university. Um, and I happened to pass the 11 plus, you know, and, and got into the grammar school. Uh, and uh, I was, it was all right. Um, I, I, I kind of felt that I never really fitted in uh, uh, to the grammar school. And um, I... Why? Managed, yeah? Why? Why do you... Uh, think why? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess partly, you know, there was a bit of a social class uh, thing there uh most most of the uh pupils at the grammar school which was an all boys all boys school uh didn't come from council estates you know i think uh the year i started there was one there was one other guy from my own council estate uh, that uh, uh started uh, started grammar school uh so i never really f- felt uh, like I fully belonged. Uh, but I, I managed to grab a handful of uh, whatever they were at the time, GCSEs, um, and went uh, went on into sixth form. Um, was that still at the grammar school? Yeah. Yeah. Had it to, yeah, they, they had their own sixth form. So, uh, uh, and I was doing languages uh, uh, in sixth form. Um, but I began to get restless. Um, my uh, sister had started work and, and she was earning money, my older sister. My friends from where I lived uh, had left school and they were earning money. <laughs> um, so I lasted uh, about a year in sixth form and then left. Uh, and uh, my parents were disappointed, you know, they wanted me to do languages and then and then do a teaching qualification and then, and go and teach languages somewhere. Um, was that the aim at the time? That, that was their aim, yeah. Um, bless, bless them, yeah. Um, but it, it wasn't mine. And uh, so I started working in a bank. Um, and I was uh, probably 16 or 17 at the time, started work in the bank and uh, stayed there for four years um, in Carlisle. The, um, uh, the work was sometimes interesting, uh, 
sometimes not. So I worked in a branch actually that that uh, was next to an auction mart, uh, uh, you know, a, a cattle auction mart. So um, that that provided quite a bit of interest, you know, especially when uh, animals escaped and found their found their way into the bank, you know. Has that, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, bulls racing down the high street. <laughs> uh, but then, of course, what happened was that a lot of my contemporaries from school had uh, finished their A levels, gone to university, and when they came back in the summer, uh, they were telling such wonderful tales oh. about about what it was like. Uh, to be away f away from home in a university or college setting, and what a final time they were all having. Uh, wow. So I again I began to get a bit restless. I thought, well, you know, perhaps perhaps I should try that after all. Uh, banking wasn't great. We I worked for a bank called Martin's Bank, uh, which later was uh, absorbed by. Barclays Bank and what was happening was that uh, when there were any promotions uh, available they were going to the guys that worked for and gals actually yep that worked for Barclays rather than the guys that worked for Martins you know so uh, I thought I'm never going to get anywhere here I don't really enjoy the work and uh, so I decided I'd have to go and uh, do some A levels because I'd left uh, part way through up at six and didn't have any A levels. Um, that was uh, the first step. But uh, before I could do that, um, I needed to save a bit of money um, to uh, pay pay my way through uh, uh, through uh, A levels. So that was um, I spent uh, six months um, uh, labouring for companies like. Uh, Tarm Academy and uh, uh, Border Engineering Limited or whatever up in up in Carlisle. Actually, they were building the M6 motorway. So the, this, this this illustrates how long ago it was. Yeah, they were building the M6 motorway uh, up uh, through through Carlisle at the time, the last the last stretch. Um, and uh, so I worked on that uh, for six months. Uh, save saved a bit of money. And, um, Do you regret not staying in sixth form? No, not now. No, no. I mean, there were times. There were times, of course, when when my friends were telling me their tales uh, of what it was like at university. That that uh, I did regret it. Yeah, uh, but you know, I say life. Life's a series of accidents really you know punctuated by one or two um decisions that you make yourself you know <laughs> that influence things a, lo a lot of things happen by accident chance uh and um so so i am where i am and uh, I've, I've i've enjoyed uh, i've enjoyed what i've done um so so i went to uh technical Carlisle Technical College it was, yeah, and yeah. Um, to, to do A-levels, uh, I, I, I didn't do languages, I did economics and sociology and mm -hmm. stuff, stuff like that, you know. What changed your mind, or changed from languages? Um, well, I just, I just wanted to change, and I, th I suppose I thought that um, I didn't want to do languages at university, so... Um, and I did, I, but actually, I didn't know what I wanted to do at university. I just knew I didn't want to do languages, and I wasn't, I wasn't uh, a particularly good uh, scientist, you know, like physical sciences, chemistry, biology, maths, any of that. I wasn't good at that kind of uh, subject. So I um, decided to do uh, these uh, these different subjects that we'd had no experience of at school at all. Um, uh, with a with a view possibly uh, to having a go at sociology uh, degree level, wow. I think, um, and that was that, that was that was a good year. You know, um, I uh, 
I met uh, I met some good friends. Uh, went hitchhiking around Scandinavia, uh, and um, did all did all right. Oh yeah, we got involved in the students' union quite heavily, and uh, uh, had a lot of uh, a lot of bands uh, booked to come and play in uh, the market hall in Carlisle, that kind of thing. Uh, it was quite exciting, and and and. I knew then that you know I'd made the right decision because I was I was actually enjoying uh, enjoying my life uh, uh, um, rather than uh, rather than just uh, plodding on uh, through. That's always it. a good sign, enjoying. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I had a good time. And uh, how did you find the array levels this time in comparison to the previous experience, the sort of education, and then high school too? Was it? Because you're going from a grammar school to a technical college, I imagine quite different. Yeah. A few years in between, but what's the comparison? Well, there was a much more relaxed approach to learning and teaching in in the tech college. Um, I mean, the, the the people that were doing the A levels there were were people like myself that uh, hadn't completed A levels. There there were some mature uh, candidates as well joining the A-level groups, uh, but there was a much more relaxed approach compared to the approach of grammar school. I mean, the, you know, the teachers still wore uh, gowns at grammar school, uh, and um, it was very traditional, strict timetable, you know, you had to be in a place at a certain time, and so on. Whereas uh, at technical college, it was entirely up to you. If you didn't do it, then, <laughs> then you know you were paying, you were paying the fees. Um, uh, so it's your loss. Yeah. yeah exactly. So 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 it was. Um, uh, it, it put more responsibility on you, for sure. Uh, but if you weren't going to survive that, then uh, likely you wouldn't survive university. You know. Well, exactly. Mm. So where do we, what does it take you next? What happened after technical college? Um, well, I just I applied uh, to uh, I think I think we had to apply through UCAS at the time. What it, what, uh, um, uh, to go to university, uh, and um, I decided I wanted to do sociology or anthropology, and and we uh, we applied to. Oh, amongst other places, Lancaster and Hull. I remember those particularly because I had interviews uh, at Lancaster and Hull. Um, but there was something <laughs> there was something about the environments when you know when you went down for your interview and you got shown around, uh, and I just didn't feel comfortable in the environments uh, there. So I just, I didn't accept those places uh, and I hung on and hung on. Um, and then I saw an advert for what was then uh, Bolton Institute of uh, Technology uh, back in uh, 1970, uh, 70, 71, that kind of stuff, 1971. Um, Bolton Institute of Technology was offering uh, degrees validated by the University of London oh. uh, because we it couldn't award its own degrees at the time. So there were University of London degrees and they were offering uh, economics, um, anthropology, psychology, uh, um, sociology, and more importantly for me, combinations of those subjects. So I signed up to do a degree in psychology, anthropology, and economics. All right. uh, that was my that was my initial uh, uh, degree. Uh, there was no interview. Um, I applied, and they offered me a place. And and of course the. I mean, I know now, you know, that at the time they were trying to establish themselves uh, as a, a higher education uh, institution. And so 
they were keen to take students. Yeah. Uh, and that was, that, was, that was fine. I had actually visited uh, Bolton and the Bolton Institute of Technology the year previous. One of my friends at Technical College happened to uh, uh, hail from Bolton. And one weekend he was visiting uh, friends here and asked if I'd like to come with him. And uh, I said, yeah, I'll come down. Uh, and we came down and we visited uh, Bolton Institute of Technology, which was um, spanking brand new at the time. Uh, it smelled good, you know, <laughs> it was just new. Uh, it was small and I think that where is it in comparison to where we know now? Where, where would that be? It's on the same site, more or less. We didn't, we weren't in the Eagle uh, Mill then. Um, Bolton One wasn't there, and the Centre for Motorsport and Engineering wasn't there, and so on. It was basically centred on uh, what is now uh, Senate House and the Design Studio, but yeah. it was, an, but it was an eight-story building. Really? Yeah, that was uh, that was demolished. Uh, Oh, wow, 2000, and I can't, you know, I couldn't tell you when it was demolished, 2005, maybe, something like that, um, around about, I could get this entirely wrong, around about the time we got university title, but um, uh, so, um, so I remembered it, you know, I mean, a year later when I was applying, I, I remembered it and I thought that's a nice, nice place and it felt comfortable to me and the size of the place was something I thought that I could, uh, I could cope with, you know, uh, thrive in, rather than a bigger, a bigger institution with uh, many, many more, uh, many, many more students. Yeah, that's important. I think you need to feel the place, don't you? I know I did that when I came to Bolton, and I think sometimes if you've got a massive institution, you just feel a bit lost. Yes, that. Uh, hit, yeah, hit the nail on the head there, Lindsay. That's uh, that's entirely it. I mean, uh, I guess I'm a small town guy as well. Coming I mean, Carlisle, a small town, um, and um, that's just my my comfort zone, you know. Uh, so uh, so yeah, I started at Bolton uh, in uh, 1971 wow. and, uh, as an undergraduate. Within a term or so, uh, I began to find my feet. I thought this is good. Uh, make you know, you make friends, and uh, and then I was approached. Uh, so I was doing this combined degree, at the, uh, and then I was approached in the library by the uh, the head of uh, psychology at the time, a wonderful guy called uh, Alec Bagley, um, and um, he said. Was I interested potentially in transferring across to single honours psychology? Okay. Uh, because he thought that uh, I showed some potential in that subject. So I moved across to single honours psychology. I'd lost a term, um, but I realise now, of course, that uh, there was internal competition going on between different departments uh, for uh, students. So basically, he, he just poached me uh, from, uh, from another uh, department, you know. And, uh, that's, that's the way it was. So I was a willing pawn um, <laughs> under those circumstances. Uh, and I got, I got to grips with psychology. I, I liked it a lot. And by the end of my degree, um, I... To, well, it was a couple of years, I think a couple of years after the end of my degree, I'd published my first paper uh, with um, a member of staff and another, another colleague. But I didn't know what I wanted to do uh, at the end of it, particularly. Um, so I went back to Carlisle um, and moved back in with my parents, you know and started cleaning cars oh wow uh, yeah what what else what else <laughs> what else do you do um so i had i thought about teacher training to be fair um and i went to cardiff for an interview 
uh, to do a PGC. But I, um, again, I, I knew it wasn't right for me. You know, uh, I'm not. I'm not a natural teacher. Um, I don't think and, uh, the idea of teaching in uh, secondary schools. Uh, you know, I, as my as my as my wife now says, uh, they'd eat me alive. You know. <laughs> Um, and then she was a secondary school teacher, so. Uh, I couldn't she, do anything worse. I really couldn't. Yeah. yeah. We did a um, we did a module in psychology where we had to do some um, sessions with the UTC, you know, at Bolton University yeah. Technical College. Yeah. And um, oh my gosh, I think they were year nines. It was awful. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah, you you just got to be made of different stuff, I think. To. Yeah. Uh, to just to engage that age range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah. You've got to relate to them. They've got to be interested in you. You've got to be interesting for them to want. Oh, oh, it was awful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it certainly made me realise um, how yeah. important it is to be a good secondary school teacher, and it's definitely not me. Yeah, I know, I know. You just got to be made of different stuff. Like yeah, you do. Know, a lot of credit to them. Yeah. Um, so, so. Uh, yeah, I was I was cleaning cleaning cars and um, uh, I was I was looking in the newspapers and as we did at the time <laughs> for uh, for jobs and there was a a job advertised uh, back at Bolton uh, Institute of Technology uh, for a research assistant oh, wow. in in, uh, in psychology, um, which I applied for uh, and was interviewed for and they offered me. The job and it was a job it was a paid uh job at that time Bolton Institute of Technology was controlled by the local authority um and so I was a local authority employee effectively yeah. uh, but uh, they were paying me to do a PhD um which I thought oh well, you know that's got to be good. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean the salary, the salary itself was uh, was something to, at that time compared to the student grants that I had been living on, uh, the salary was something to uh, write home about. You know, it was it was fine. Um, so so I embarked upon this PhD in uh, psychology, and uh, it took me four years to get it. Um, even uh, even though I was doing it full time, uh, because again, you know, I kind of started to enjoy myself um, a little bit it, too much. <laughs> yeah, the the freedom, freedom again of uh, being being your own master, effectively. Of course, you had supervisors, you know, but my supervisors um, uh, were perhaps more relaxed. That there, there wasn't the there wasn't the infrastructure around research degrees. It was probably me and one other person doing a research degree at, at that time in the whole institution. Wow. There was a guy doing a PhD in electronics, I remember, uh, and then there was me. Uh, so there was no infrastructure. There was no graduate school, no uh, uh, code of practice, okay. no research degree regulations, uh, you know, and, and so on. It was all very uh, open. My supervisors uh, helped me out, of course, and they're still uh, friends of mine. I still see them uh, from time to time now. And, uh, what was your research area? My area was, um, I think, the, the title. The title of my PhD was uh, "Cerebral Asymmetry and Spatial Ability." So I was interested in in the the way in which uh, functions that were attributed to one hemisphere or the other in the brain uh, uh, influence people's abilities. And so, you know, the, the, you, you'll have come across this potentially. In in uh, so, so, if if language is in two hemispheres rather than one, does that does that make it better or worse for your linguistic capabilities that you know that that kind of issue but i was interested in spatial ability rather than language uh, and uh, and that was good and and i enjoyed it uh, i was i was publishing papers by the end of it um, 
my uh, my viva was one of the interesting experiences. That it, I'll, I'll I'll tell you a couple of stories about the PhD before I move on, and then and then uh, I. I'd finished it. I'd done all the data collection. I'd done all the analysis. Uh, there was nothing else for me to do. Uh, but I couldn't get started writing it up. I, I'd written nothing um, the last, uh, the last towards the last summer um, of my uh, four years, and and uh, I was always down in the library s trying to find that extra paper that might have something important to say about my subject area um, and I couldn't I couldn't write anything and one of my hobbies was uh, five-a-side football at the time so I was playing five-a-side football in the gym uh, the sports hall as it is now or was it's not used as a sports hall at the moment um, and um, I, I broke broke my leg uh, interestingly uh, tripped over my supervisor's foot break my leg uh, and I, I was confined to my flat uh, for several weeks over a, over a summer uh, and that's when I wrote it up I just stayed at home uh, and wrote yeah. and wrote and wrote yeah um, so I got it in uh, 78 79 uh, yeah and then there was a job opened up at the University of Liverpool um, which um, is the only year that I've spent away from Bolton since uh, since I came in uh, 1971. So I was at Liverpool between 78 and 79. And the role, uh, the role there was called uh, Demonstrator in Psychology. Um, it was... Um, it arose, I think, from uh, the old medical schools where... Um, the, 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 the prof would be uh, explaining things and they would have some demonstrator there to uh, slice the body up, you know, uh, uh, on the cadaver uh, on, the, on, the, on the bench. Uh, the, uh, so so the, what the demonstrator role was supposed to be was to help out in practical classes uh, in psychology, you know, the laboratory work. That, that you do uh, and do some tutorials and such. So it wasn't a particularly onerous uh, role and it allowed me again to sit and write papers, um, which, which I did. Unfortunately, it was a temporary job. I knew it was gonna to come to an end after maximum three years. So when a position opened up back at Bolton for a lecturer in psychology. Uh, and, and I'd never moved from Bolton. I was traveling to Liverpool every day. Uh, so uh, so uh, I applied for that role and um, uh, started work as a lecturer in psychology in, I think, uh, about November 1979. And, and then was in that role for about 13, 14 years or so. Yeah, something like, something of that sort. 13 or 14 years of the lecture in psychology. Was the, the psychology department was a good department then, and, and, and I think it's a good department now. Uh, there was a good, there's always been a, a pretty good vibe in the psychology department. Um, we, were, we were expanding, we were adding uh, new courses. We modular modularized the uh, the curriculum. There was there was uh, uh, there was there was a time when the curriculum didn't have modules. You know, it was just courses that you took. Um, we um, the institution had had changed from being built an institute of technology to being built an institute of higher education. Uh, in 19, 1982, so that was three years, three years after I took that uh, that job, uh, and I progressed. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, uh, and I liked the kind of course management side of things, um, uh, being a course leader, being year tutor. We 
I went from a lecturer to senior lecturer to principal lecturer uh, during that uh, 13 year 13 year period and then there was a, a there was a, a decision point uh, uh, again like you know they, they crop up from time to time where there was an established head of department I knew I knew that I was never going to be head of department at Bolton and I didn't particularly want to move from Bolton I was doing all right here it was a nice place uh, made lots of friends colleagues uh, met my wife you know and so on so there was no reason for me to move from Bolton if I could help it so I was offered uh, a role which was at uh, institutional level uh, number one job was establishing um, a uh, a master's framework across the institution. We, we only had a couple of master's degrees at the time and um, they were in uh, uh, civil and civil engineering and uh, they were awarded by uh, the University of Salford. Uh, so because we were beginning to sniff out university title, uh, they realized they needed to expand the numbers of postgraduate students in the university. And they thought of a modular master's framework that, that encompassed the whole institution was the right way to do it. So they asked me to design and uh, uh, populate uh, um, with uh, different subjects, this um, modular master's framework. Uh, and the idea, of course, was that s students, yes, you could do a, 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 a master's in psychology, but you could also mix mix it up a bit. You might want to do some psychology and some philosophy, uh, some human resources management uh, and so on. And uh, so we got that validated um, uh, by the uh, Council for National Academic Awards, it was at the time, because we... Uh, we uh, weren't i don't think awarding our own degrees until 1992. Uh, the other part of the job was um i worked in the research office um we had a research office at the time it wasn't to do with postgraduate research students uh, it was just to do with research promoting research and that was to prepare help to prepare the institution for the uh, research assessment exercise in 1996. Um, so I, I, did, I did that for four years um, and uh, the research office was dismantled. Um, the module master's framework had been set up. So I had, a, again, I had a choice to make uh, and it was put to me actually uh, as, a, as a choice. Uh, I could go back to the, the psychology department um, or apply for this role that was coming up as as uh, head of academic quality and standards. Uh, so this is back in 1996. Um, and the, the guy that had been head of academic quality and standards previously was a guy called uh, Peter Marsh. And uh, the, the, li the library, of course, is... Uh, is named uh, in his uh, in his honour, and he was a he was a great mentor, Peter. I looked, I did look up to Peter Marsh, and uh, so I took I applied for that role and got got the job, and spent about fifteen years uh, as uh, head of academic quality and standards. I think the the job title by the time I finished was dean dean of academic quality and standards. Uh, had a really good team of staff. Um, uh, I think uh, one, one of whom is still working in the Standards and Enhancement Office now, Angela Nuttall. I don't know whether you've ever come across Angela Nuttall. If you get involved in, uh, in um, uh, developing uh, new courses, uh, you, would, you would come across her. Uh, but it was a good, a good team. Um, and then... Oh, Fifteen years, so about two thousand and eleven. Um, I uh, I'd had a few health problems, so I decided it was time to um, stop uh, working full time. 
so, uh, so effectively, I retired. Uh, but I, the university, largely through the offices of uh, Peter Marsh, but, but uh, also uh, Professor Holmes uh, at, at the time, uh, was uh, kind enough to allow me to take on a, uh, a part-time role uh, as what was then called postgraduate research manager okay. in the research and graduate school. Uh, so I worked with uh, Donna and Nicola and Bethan and, and so on in the research and graduate school for about three years. Um, the the job then was much, much as it is now, you know, oversight of postgraduate research uh, provision uh, across across the institution, and um, did that did that for three years until uh, Professor McGee arrived in the university, and Prof Professor McGee and I had worked together back in the nineties. Uh, he was he was head of psychology at Bolton. Uh, uh, back in the 1990s uh, for, a, for a short period of time um, but when he was appointed assistant vice chancellor um, for quality um, he uh, he decided that I should uh, go and work for him uh, so so he, he plucked me out of uh, the research and graduate school and uh, dropped me back into the standards and enhancement uh, office, um, which I'd left uh, more or less three years previously, um, and so that's that's where I current currently am. Uh, wow! So, what is it about Bolton? You seem to love Bolton. <laughs> well, well, I, you know that, that's. I guess my my journey, uh, you know, hasn't been the journey that's taken me. Uh, from one institution to another, and different uh, different towns and cities. Uh, Keep pulling in, you back in the land. Um, my journey has been, yeah, within the same institution, but I've done lots of different things uh, whilst I've been in the institution. Uh, mm. And and uh, what I say to people is is well, you know, why would I leave? Yeah. Why would I leave when? Uh, the institution's been able to offer me uh, everything that I could possibly have wanted, by by and large. Yeah. And there was a time where that that you know when I was finishing my PhD that I thought it'd be nice to go and work in Canada or uh, uh, Holland or or some such. And I played around with those those notions uh, for a while, but then you start making personal connections as well. You know? Uh, and and uh, those those become more important uh, as as you get older, uh, and uh, they they root they root you to one place um, very often. And so that's that's really what's happened. Um, Would you change anything about your journey? Uh, no, I don't think I would. Uh, no, not not at all. I think uh, it, it's uh, it, it's been varied even though it's been uh, at Bolton and I listen with fascination to uh, some of the journeys that others have described uh, where they've uh, moved, moved uh, from place to place uh, and had to get to grips with uh, getting to know a new institution, uh, new people, a new city and so on uh, and I think well that, that, that was good for them but what's been good for me is, yeah. is to stay is to stay here, and to uh, have my variety in the in the same institution. It would be really interesting to look at that, wouldn't it? To look at different personality traits, because you know, if you're comfortable and settled and happy in one place, then why would you need to move? Yeah. Versus somebody who is it? I don't know. Could it be different achievement? Because you can still achieve, can't you? No matter where you are, is it? Is it some, you know, you use the word restless. You wonder if some people are restless and they can't stay in one place. Whereas if you're a settled person, then maybe you can. It's interesting, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, I, it's not to say that uh, I don't like moving around. I, I mean, I uh, spent uh, the last 10 years or so uh, traveling 
uh, widely uh, across across the globe, uh, and uh, that's really really enjoyable, fascinating. You know, uh, oh. uh, I do love that. But um, uh, it's it's uh, as Frank Sinatra says, it's uh, it's good to come home. You know. Yes, of course. Uh, and I wonder if you think about um, instigating change, how can you instigate change the most? Probably by staying in a place long enough to be able to do that, to understand the institutions, to understand the students, the uh, academics, and to yeah. truly fundamentally know what Bolton needs. Whereas if you're hopping from place to place, yeah. you're a bit of a fly-by now almost, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're absolutely right. And and the, the other thing, of course, is that the, the, the institution... Uh, Bolton, whatever it was called, Institute of Technology, Institute of Higher Education, University of Bolton, you know, the institution has been good to me. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it's, um, I, I'm not saying that I feel an obligation to stay here because it's been good to me, but there's no, there's no reason why I would want to move uh, away. It's, I mean, the history of the institution is, uh, it's just wound up with my own educational journey. It's it's changed. It's it's been three different institutions, as it were, mm -hmm. over that space of time. Uh, it's uh, it's earned the power to award its own taught degrees uh, it, and its own research degrees, and then it's got the university title. Uh, so all the significant changes that have occurred uh, whilst uh, I've been here at Bolton uh, have, uh, have been, I've been influenced by, and, and some of them I've had some small uh, influence on uh, too. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think, I think be because I started here when the institution had just been born, um, you know, I, uh, I feel a connection to it, yeah. For sure. Oh, that's amazing. I think um, I think that's a really good place to stop, isn't it? Probably is, Lindsay. Really yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for talking to me. 